First into the ring, the Bernese Mountain Dog. The Bouvier de Flandre. The Boxer. The Bull Mastiff. The Doberman. The German Pincher. The Giant Schnauzer. The Great Dane. The Greenland Dog. The Hobovart. The Leonberger. The Mastiff. The Neapolitan Mastiff. The Newfoundland. The Portuguese Water Dog. The Rottweiler. The Saint Bernard. The Siberian Husky. The Tibetan Mastiff. And finally, the Alaskan Malamute. I now hand you over to Mr. Bernard Hall for the main commentary. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Everton is going round and looking at all the dogs and she will then carry out a hands-on examination and she will see them move. Then she will reduce the total number of dogs she's got in the group, which is a full group by the way, to eight. Then those eight will be moved again and she will have another look at them just to confirm in her mind what she thinks she wants to make the winner of this group. And from those eight, we shall actually pick four. Though the Alaskan Malamute actually entered the ring last, it is alphabetically the first dog in this group and I suspect will be the first one to be seen by Mrs. Everton. Yes, here it comes. So Mrs. Everton is going over to the point where she will examine the dogs. First one, then the Alaskan Malamute. They were judged today by Mr. Andrew Brace. He had an entry of 75, and his best of breed winner was the dog 15746. The Alaskan Malamute is a large, impressive breed of sled dog. Maximum permitted height is 28 inches at the withers for the males and the bone and body should be commensurate with that height. Originally used as a heavy duty freighting dog in winter, a pack animal in summer by the Malamute Eskimos after whom it is named. Historically it was never used in large teams or for any form of racing. If you like, you can call it the cart horse of the canine world. 
Families kept only one or two dogs. Surplus dogs were so rare that during the gold rush, Malamutes became the ultimate status symbol for white men. It's one of the largest of the Spitz breeds, the Alaskan Malamute. The Bernese Mountain Dog, judged by Mrs. Carol Hartley. She had an entry of 209, and her best of breed winner was the dog 15920. A brief description would say it's the general farm dog of Switzerland. It was at least originally a farm and draft dog. Comes from the Bernese Overland. And these black, tan and white dogs were used for droving cattle and for pulling carts. <laughs> History of the breed in the UK began in 1970 when the first two Bernese, a male and female, were released after producing a litter of six puppies during their nine months in quarantine kennels. By 1989, there were in excess of 3,000 of these, and of course, they have stayed quite a popular breed of dog. Now we move to the Bouvier de Flandre. 54 were entered for the judge, Mr. John McManus. His best of breed was also a dog, 16027. Bouvier means bovine or cattle herder. Each region throughout Belgium and France had its own type. The Bouvier is a tough, natural working dog, hardy enough to live out in all weathers. In the First World War, the Bouvier gained a reputation as both an ambulance dog and a messenger. More recently, it has been used as a military dog. And in its own country, it cannot hold the title of champion until it has passed a working test. Bouvier de Flandre. We move on now to the boxer. The breed had two judges today, Mr. Gert Nielsen, who actually celebrated his 69th birthday while judging the dogs, and the bitches were judged by Mrs. Angela Kennett. Between them, they had 318 boxers to go over, and they were, in fact, the second highest, numerically, the second highest breed in the working group. The selection for the best of breed winner was the dog 16292. <laughs> Strongly built, muscular breed of dog. German breeding, of course and behind it are such breeds as the Great Dane and the Bulldog. Here we have the Bull Mastiff. Judge was Mr. S. Ford. Good entry here of 189. And again, it was a dog to get best of breed. It's number 16496. This is a powerful British dog. Has a square skull and muzzle. It was evolved something around, or just over, a hundred years ago. Originally called the Gamekeeper's Night Dog. They used to be set against poachers when poaching attracted the death penalty. 
and poachers were therefore prepared to murder gamekeepers to avoid being caught, and the gamekeepers brought these dogs in as their protection. Recognized by the Kennel Club in 1925, and now we see the bull mastiff as a show dog. The bull mastiff. Now it's the turn of the Dobon. Two judges. Dogs were judged by Mrs. Jackie Perry and the bitches by Mrs. Anne Bradley. They attracted the third highest entry in the working group, 302 between them. And the best of breed was yet another dog, 16541. Frederick Louis Doberman was born in the town of Apolda, Thuringia, East Germany, way back in 1834. He grew up to be a tax collector, not a popular man, and he evolved a breed of dog to help him and to protect him, and that was his Doberman. Before 1939, the Doberman was virtually unknown in the United Kingdom. But of course, since then, they have come on in leaps and bounds, and now we see the Doberman at most of our shows. German Pincher next. Judge, Mrs. P. Chadwick. 19 were entered. And this time we had a bitch winning the best of breed. It's number 16852. German Pincher originated in Germany, of course. Officially recognized there as a distinct breed in 1895. Had its first breed standard written in 1884, revised in 1895. One of the foundation breeds of the, in the development of the Doberman, which we've just seen, and also the miniature Pinscher. It's a working dog. German Pinschers are known for their vermin hunting skills and a desire to protect both home and family. It's a medium-sized, short-coated, muscular and powerful dog, and yet it is quite elegant in its appearance. German Pinscher. The giant schnauzer, one of the three varieties of schnauzer which we have. The giant schnauzer is the only one in the working group, and today they were judged by Mrs. Carolyn Craig. She had an entry of 77, and her best of breed was 16907, which is a dog. This breed can come in black or salt and pepper, with shades ranging through dark iron grey to light grey. Coat is harsh and wiry, but it's short enough to be smart. Originates from the area around Munich, from which he also takes the name Munchner Dog. And farmers used him as long ago as the 15th century to drive cattle. He's also done work as a police dog, the giant schnauzer. Mrs. Ferleth Summerfield judged the Great Danes. She had 264 and chose the dog, 17116. The Dane is known as the Apollo of dogdom. Claimed it's one of the most charming of dogs. 
and is, by and large, a larger-than-life character and embodies all the traits of the nicest person you can think of. They were one time called boar hounds, which explains what they were originally intended for, and they hunted wild boar in packs. The largest pack of Great Danes was housed on the continent and numbered some 612 dogs. It's also known as the Deutsche Dogger or the German Mastiff. Now we have the Greenland Dog. And perhaps the Greenland dog is not very familiar to you, but at one time we called it the Eskimo dog, but now it's had its name changed to Greenland dog, judged today in the breed by Mrs. Zena Thorne Andrews, entry of 14, and another dog, 17211, take, took the best of breed. A tough freight hauling dog comes from the Arctic with Canada as its home country because it was Canada which fostered and saved the breed. A breed of dog which has been known to withstand temperatures as low as minus 75 to minus 94 Fahrenheit and that is cold. The Eskimo dog, as we used to call it, originated in Greenland, but was accepted by Canada. Now we come on to the Hovavart. Mr. John Sharp was the judge. 25 entries in the breed classes. And yet again, we have a dog, 17230. It's an ancient German breed, which almost died out at the end of the last century. It was rex rescued by a zoologist, and the first new litter was registered in 1922. Breed was officially recognized in 1937, and is now very popular, especially on the continent. First imports to this country were in 1980. I'm told the sense of humor is essential if you live with a Hovart. More I cannot tell you. This is the Leonberger, judged by Mrs. G. Smith. Good entry, 124. This time we have a bitch, 17321 as best of breed. Home of the Leonberger is Germany, and it's a breed created in 1840 by the then mayor of Leonberg, Henrik Essig, to honor his town. As you can see, it's a large, strong, muscular breed, especially created, as I say, by Herr Essig. And he was trying to produce a dog which was similar to a lion. He began by crossing a Lancier, black and white Newfoundland, with a St. Bernard, and then used a great Pyrenees. And he went on with various crosses until the Leonberger, we know, was the final result. Now, this big chap is the Mastiff, judged by Mr. Christopher Havick, who comes from Germany. Entry of 98. It's another dog, 17385. Powerful dog, and a dog with a long history. And it's thought his ancestry may well go back to the ancient Tibetan Mastiff. 
One thing is known that when the Romans invaded Britain, the Mastiff was already here, having been brought in presumably by dog traders, and there were a lot of them traveling the world in those days. So impressed with the Romans, they took the Mastiff dogs back to Rome to fight in the arenas. Throughout history, we have references to the Mastiff type of dog. And once upon a time, they used to roam the grounds of large estates as guard dogs. <clears throat> the Neapolitan Mastiff. Judged today by Mr. John James, an entry of 28. Yet again, we have a dog taking best of breed. It's number 17485. And I suppose you could say that looking at this dog, you see history. Well, the Neapolitans are direct descendants of the Molossus of the Roman fighting arenas. During all the centuries since the Neapolitan has been used as a war dog, a police dog, a guard dog, a draft dog. But it wasn't until 1946 that the Neapolitans were presented to a dog show in Naples. Since when it's been found their type differs but little from those depicted in paintings and manuscripts of many, many years ago. We just ignore what's happening and listen to me. <laughs> when you've got to go, you've got to go. This then is the Neapolitan Mastiff. The green bays look just as near grass as you could get. Now we come to the, <coughs> excuse me, come to the Newfoundland. The judge was Mrs. Pamela Cross Stern. Big entry here of 262. And yet we have another dog, 17549 as best of breed. Newfoundland developed on the island from which it takes its name almost certainly a combination of the ancient native Indian dogs and the many European breeds which are carried across the Atlantic by explorers and by fishermen. The cocktail of breeding established into a large web-footed thick-coated dog capable of, capable of draft and water work. The breed prospered in the United Kingdom until 1914 and again in 1939 when the numbers were almost fatally depleted by wartime restrictions. But since the 1950s, there has been a steady increase in numbers and popularity. And yet it still remains a relatively uncommon breed. See more in the shows than anywhere. Portuguese water dog. The judge was Mrs. P. Chadwick. Entry of 26 in the breed classes, and yet another dog, 17765, went best of breed. Home country, obviously, Portugal. A breed associated with the fishermen of that country. And they stem from the same stock as other water dogs of Europe. The breed has webbed feet and has been known to herd fish into nets, catching any which escape the net. They've also been known to dive deep into the water to retrieve men overboard and to retrieve lost articles. Even more astoundingly, their keen scenting ability and sight has enabled them to draw attention to shoals of fish from a watch point where they stand in the bow of a fishing vessel. Portuguese water dog.
top entry in the working group was that of the Rottweiler. Had two judges, Mr. Dennis Harding for the dogs, Mrs. Violet Slade for the bitches. Total entry between the two of them was 319. And here it was a bitch that went best of breed, 17902. Not really a breed for those who allow uh, their dogs to rule them. But the Rottweiler, if trained properly, makes an intelligent, fearless, and faithful companion. The St. Bernard. 106 were entered. The judge was Mr. John Bolden. He also chose a dog, 18163, as his best of breed. I suppose one could say this is one of the most romantic of the breeds because we all associate these dogs with brave rescues in the deep snows of the Swiss Alps. The breed has been immortalized in legend and in painting. The legend of the dogs of the Hospice of St. Bernard goes back to that saintly man, St. Bernard, who built the hospice and whose aim in life was to help poor and needy pilgrims traveling the St. Gotthard Pass. <laughs> they certainly did rescue many people. And they come in two forms, actually, the smooth coat and the coat which we see here today and we probably most readily recognize. St. Bernard. Siberian Husky. Judge, Mrs. Zena Thorne Andrews. Entry of 230. And here we do have a bitch as best of breed, it's number 18234. Siberian Husky's origins can be traced to the ancient Chukchi sled dogs of the Kolyma River basin in northern Siberia. The breed was developed and encouraged by the Chukchi people, an ancient tribe whose culture was based on long distance sled dogs. Actual country of registry of this breed is the United States. has been called the Arctic Husky and is a breed which has acquitted itself both in the show rings of Britain and also out on the trails. And if the Greenland dog is the cart horse of the uh, Siberian uh, plains, it's the, this is the race horse of the Arctic. Finally, we come to our last breed in the working group. This is the Tibetan Mastiff, judged today by Mrs. Sue Garner. She had an entry of 27, and hers also was a dog for best of breed, 18437. Tibetan Mastiff is one of the oldest purebred dogs known and originated from the Tibetan Plateau, also known in the general Himalayan region, assumed to have been taken there by travelers. Breed was first seen in the West during the early to mid 19th century. And as you can imagine, looking at it, it excited great interest. Many breeds of dog are reputed to have derived from the Tibetan Mastiff particularly, it is said, the Newfoundlands, the St. Bernards, the Pyrenees, and the Anatolian Shepherds. T Tibetan Mastiff. Now, Mrs. Everton will look at the dogs again. 
She probably has got some idea in her mind what she's going to do, but she wants to confirm those things she has seen. Then she's going to cut to eight. And so, having looked at them all, Mrs. Everton is now going to make her choice. Oh, I think eight dogs. <coughs> First out is the Bernese Mountain Dog, then the Bouvier de Flandre, the Doberman, the Giant Schnauzer, the Great Dane, oh no, the Doberman's gone back. Oh, here it comes again. The Newfoundland. St. Bernard and the Siberian Husky and that's her eight. She's saying goodbye and thank you to all the others who competed and got this far in the competition. Come on ladies and gentlemen, a big crowd round of applause. They're marvellous dogs. That's right, keep it going for those at the end, there are a few more to come yet. It's quite a thing to get into the big ring at Crufts. Be it for the groove or for the best in show. So, here we have eight. I suspect that uh, Mrs. Everton might just want to see the move again. Let's see what happens. She's going over to the Bernese. Yes, she's just telling the handler what she wants. So here we are, the Bernese Mountain Dog, 
Now the Bouvier, 16027. Doberman one six five four one. Giant Schnauzer, 16907. Great Dane, one seven double one six. Newfoundland, one seven five four nine. St. Bernard, one eight one six three. And the Siberian Husky, one eight two three four. Right, all those dogs have now moved again. The stewards are bringing out the place uh, place podia. All that remains now is for Mrs. Everton to pick her four, especially the winner of the group who will go on to the best of show arena late tonight. And the group goes to the Siberian Husky. Second, it's the Bouvier de Plandre. And third, we have the Great Dane. And in fourth, the Newfoundland. And Mrs. Everton is thanking the others as they leave, ladies and gentlemen, keep that applause going. Four good dogs didn't quite make the top spots. So here we have them, the four group placings. Siberian Husky, 18234. Wonderful vase, the rosette, and now the awards to the second place, which is the Bouvier de Flandre, 16027. 
In third, we have the Dane, one seven double one six. And in fourth, the Newfoundland, one seven five four nine. And ladies and gentlemen, while you're clapping, swell the applause, please, for our judge, Mrs. Margaret Everton. Come on, now they're going round, give them a big hand. Wonderful Siberian, the Bouvier, the Dane, and the Newfoundland. They will leave us now.